Hello everyone. So let me start uh, with uh, telling you the purpose of making this video first. So basically, uh, there had been a lot of queries regarding the MPhil and PhD admissions at Delhi University. And uh, because of this Corona pandemic, uh, surely since most of us are confined to our own places, it is a little bit difficult to um, get some information since we are not able to meet personally with people and uh, we are more comfortable in doing so. So uh, things are becoming a little bit uh, difficult for each one of us, but uh, I think that's the uh, probably best time to explore these uh, online platforms uh, for uh, communicating with each other and for disseminating every sort of knowledge uh, which is required by each one of you or uh, whatever uh, is are your queries should be responded uh, through these uh, online platforms. So I thought of uh, talking about these MPhil and PhD admissions um, in brief uh, what uh, I mean how can you um, take part in these courses in various uh, departments of Delhi University and uh, what exactly should you expect when you are uh, uh, seeking for admissions in these courses. Since I'm into research for almost more than 20 years now, uh, I had uh, been uh, myself a uh, MPhil and PhD students in this uh, university in chemistry department. My parent department is chemistry. So uh, right now I'm in cluster innovation uh, center. So I have very closely observed these processes, but uh, frankly speaking, I've never thought that uh, I will be, I will ever be uh, speaking with all of you uh, in this way because uh, things have always been very easy. People we used to interact with each other uh, quite easily and every information is easily accessible in Delhi University. So there had never been a problem, but uh, since this year, uh, because of pandemic, uh, people are not able to see each other uh, quite often. So things have become a little bit difficult and uh, are getting delayed. Obviously, this is causing a lot of anxiety uh, to each one of us, uh, not only to students, but parents as well. So uh, I'll just give you a quick uh, brief about these courses. What are these? Though most of the informations are already available in, on the university website, but I've realized, uh, especially students from, who are from outside, they are not really aware of the whole process. How does that work? So basically, uh, uh, any MPhil or PhD course which is in Delhi University, somewhere around 50 departments are there in which these courses are offered. So these courses are uh, uh, offered uh, now since last few years, uh, everything has become online. Uh, students have to apply online uh, through online portal, which is uh, uh, usually, open in, usually open in May or June, but this year it had been a little delayed. And then uh, in all the MPhil and PhD courses, now uh, there is an entrance test which is, which is called as Delhi University Entrance Test, two test, which had just happened in September this year. And uh, that is uh, a test which uh, everyone has to uh, go for if you are aspiring for admissions in these courses. Uh, these are entrance based courses now. Uh, the only exemption would be for the candidates who already have uh, JRFs uh, from uh, different funding agencies. I'll give you each one each detail uh, because all these documents are already there on the uh, Delhi University website but somehow uh, probably uh, students are not really aware of uh, them uh, so I'll just show you from where all these informations you can get and once you uh, go through these uh, Delhi University entrance test then uh, the scorecards are released. Nowadays, it is uh, being given uh, to national testing agency and they are the ones who are taking care of all the admission process online and uh, all the I mean, test process online. So uh, once they release these scorecards, usually all the departments, uh, they uh, shortlist the candidates and there is, a, uh, there is a rule of shortlisting candidates also. That is also there in the uh, in the uh, Delhi University notifications. Uh, so one, once the students are shortlisted, they will be communicated through, uh, preferably or and possibly through emails uh, nowadays. So these students will then be called for the interview. I mean, once they clear their uh, entrance exam, then they will be called for the interview. That will be the next step 
and then in the next step when they're called for the interview there are different processes like every department has its own way so let me start by uh, giving you a, a brief through the notifications directly so that it becomes more clear to all of you that uh, what exactly uh, so this is Delhi University website, which all of you are aware of uh, by now, I'm sure, du.ac.in. And uh, this uh, uh, site has almost all information regarding the admissions. So I will not talk about the uh, rest of the things uh, here. I'll just focus on MPhil and PhD st uh, students as of now. So any information which you need regarding MPhil and PhD students, you just need to uh, go a little bit down. Uh, and then you will uh, get this information here information about MPhil PhD address test. So, this gives you all the information regarding the test, which has already happened now. And uh, this might have given you every information regarding the schedule, syllabus, date. So, all these things were there. So, let's not go uh, and talk about it now because uh, that is already over the. Let's talk about the next phase. So uh, when we go a little bit further down, what we, op uh, what we see is there is a information about MPhil PhD uh, admission. There is a tab which talks about it. So if you need to find out the MPhil and PhD seats in each department, you need to uh, click on this uh, tab. Uh, this is for especially for MPhil courses because not, not every department gives MPhil courses. There are, uh, there are a few departments which give MPhil courses. So they are listed here. You can just uh, quickly have a look on, on, on uh, the list where uh, uh, they have mentioned 32 departments, which are uh, basically offering these MPhil courses, right? So similarly, if you uh, click on this updated PhD list of, uh, 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 of the seats uh, which are available in each department, you, this will give you the information regarding the number of the seats which are available uh, in these departments. Usually, uh, every department asks department ask their faculty members that how many students are required by them. And this list is collected, uh, uh, collected depending upon the information which is given by these faculty members. And the same information is finally uh, uploaded on the uh, website, Delhi University website. So uh, as you can see, it mentions somewhere around 51 departments which are offering these PhD courses. So this gives you a complete detail. Uh, for example, chemistry uh, requires around 80 students, which is a big number. And uh, similarly, physical education, sports science 34, commerce 50. So it gives you the availability of the number of seats it gives you all information regarding that then if we go to the guidelines for MPhil and PhD, student, uh, PhD admissions what does it talk about it basically tells you everything related to MPhil and PhD student uh, admissions how these admissions takes place basically and uh, what is the uh, what is the constitution of the committees which will be there for the um, admissions for the interviews and uh, like every department has its own departmental research committee which takes care of all the research students then there is an M there is an MPhil committee similarly there is a, a board of research studies which is a uh, next step further once everything is over from the department research council side then they that is forwarded to board of research studies so that is the next process. Then there are different kinds of constitution of committees, like which committees will be there, the, which, which committees uh, would be taking care of all the uh, admissions. So I will not talk about these things because uh, that is not really relevant here. If you need to uh, get the details, you can obviously uh, click on this document and go uh, uh, and find out or read the document for further information. But if uh, I just wanted to mention about the eligibility of the MPhil and PhD program here, which is also given here, you can just read it. Uh, uh, clear, it clearly mentions that around uh, at least 55% marks in aggregate should be there. 
and also it gives relax relaxation uh, of marks for different categories so you need to have a look on these things uh, it is also talking about the seat availability and then uh, you need to know the selection process because right now you are in the process of the selection so how these selections will take place it has very categorically mentioned mentioned that there will be an entrance test to be held once uh, in a year and uh, every department which is offering these courses would be um, having these uh, these uh, entrance test which is which will be a common test uh, which is Dell University entrance test uh, which is common for all the departments which will have which will be uh, taking care of every department uh, at the same time and then the second step it mentions is an interview or more if required for PhD in a year so it depends for it depends that uh, how many students are needed by the department department can take this interview uh, either once a year or maybe twice a year uh, because uh, let me clarify it to all of you that the uh, i think i had already mentioned it also that the students who already have jrf they are not required to go through these entrance examination but they are they are also required to register through the online portal they will be called for the interview at the same time when other students, the entrance test uh, students will be called. They will be called at the same time, but uh, uh, they will also be required to, uh, to register through the online portal. And then it talks about the entrance examination, how this entrance examination will take place. These and uh, the details regarding uh, that. So let's not go there. Uh, but uh, a very important thing which uh, all of you need to know is that uh, it is very categorically mentioning that the entrance, te entrance test will be a qualifying examination with qualifying marks as 50%. So I am uh, expecting that uh, only students which have 50% uh, marks or above in the entrance test will be the ones will be shortlisted for the um, interview. Uh, though also, I mean, I would also like to put a sort of disclaimer here that uh, whatever information I'm giving here is uh, as per my own knowledge and experience. It might uh, differ for every department, uh, for other departments, or it might differ as uh, university keeps uh, uh, giving different notifications, keeps uh, amending uh, different uh, notifications. So this, this can always vary, but uh, what I am just uh, reading it to all of you is through the uh, through the uh, guidelines which is which are already available or posted on the Delhi University websites itself website itself so uh, it also gives a relaxation to different category students so if you are falling in a, uh, in a different category you can just have a look that whether you will be uh, there is a chance of shortlist getting shortlisted or not for the interview and as I have already mentioned to all of you that it gives an exemption from entrance examination. I already had mentioned that uh, students having uh, JRFs, UGC, NET, UGC, CSIR, or DVD JRF, or ICMR JRF, or DST Inspire, every uh, kind of um, uh, every kind of fellowship uh, carrying students are sort of exempted uh, from the entrance test. Uh, also, teachers who are serving in Delhi University already, they can directly appear for the interview. Similarly, um, scientists uh, and the professionals who are already working in the R&D Institutes of Government of India, and uh, they, they, are, they come under the memorandum of understanding with the Delhi University, they can also uh, participate in, they can also take uh, they can also come for the interview. Likewise, uh, they are also talking about a specific category of uh, faculty of management studies, uh, which my, may shortlist candidates for appearing directly in interview for PhD admissions on the basis of the CAT score. So it, it is mentioning all the criteria. I mean, there should not be any confusion that whether you will be shortlisted for the uh, interview or not. So if you are calling into any of these categories, you can clearly understand whether you will be the one who will be uh, shortlisted for uh, the interview or not. And usually every department does it in individually. Once the scorecards are released, usually no departments, uh, to the best of my understanding, puts, uh, puts up the whole uh, or the complete merit list. Every department uh, just shortlists the candidate as per the rules and regulations of the university. 
and then they uh, noti notify these uh, uh, candidates individually, uh, usually through emails, uh, through emails only, and they are called for the interview. So that is how uh, this happens. Uh, so um, it it is talking about the um, interview also in detail. It also mentions that uh, every department can uh, I mean differ a little bit from these guidelines if they require to do so. They can take one interview or maybe two interview depending upon their own need or depending upon the de the internal decision of the uh, department. Every department uh, is free to decide as per their own uh, requirements. So uh, this is what uh, I just wanted to mention to all of you that this guy, this uh, document already gives you uh, most of the information regarding the interview. So you must go through this in detail so that you have an idea that uh, how this whole process works. It also gives the talks about the weightage of the entrance test and the interview that there will be 70% uh, weightage of the entrance test and 30% uh, of your performance should come through the interview or the viva, viva which you will be given uh, during the interview itself. So it talks about that also in detail, right? It also talks about admission to the foreign uh, students, usually foreign nationals um, but uh, foreign nationals um, are admitted through the uh, through the different process. They have a uh, they have to register through this uh, foreign student registry uh, portal. Uh, so that is a different uh, process. I would not like to talk about it here. Uh, and then uh, also this uh, document mentions about the fee and registration. So which will be the next step, obviously. Another very important thing I want to mention is there is one more document. Uh, on the um, on this DU website, which is MPhil and PhD admissions brochure, which you should have uh, you should have gone in detail. And if you haven't done it by now, I would suggest you to do so because it gives you the details, all the details regarding these courses, how these courses have uh, what I mean, which departments are offering them and what should you expect from them how does it uh, how does it go as far as the admissions are concerned i mean it, it is important not only for the students who have already appeared for the uh, entrance examination already already but for those students also it is important who will be maybe uh, eligible for the same next year so they should read this document clearly so that whenever uh, next uh, there is an advertisement from Delhi University for these courses, MPhil and PhD, they should be knowing all the details about these courses. It talks about admission procedure, online registration, seats available, fee registration fee, eligibility criteria, everything is there in detail. In fact, frequently asked questions also, which usually come into your mind when you are thinking about taking admission in Delhi University. Also, it talks about the university facilities, so these are most important things which each one of you uh, should know. Uh, in addition to that, I also want to mention here that every department when you go for the interview, uh, so uh, there are a few departments which ask for the uh, research proposal while you might have filled up the form. They might have asked it at the, I mean, that time itself. You might have given a small research pro proposal. What is your idea of research? What do you want to work on? Uh, maybe a brief, uh, just one page write up or something like that. And uh, some departments might ask you uh, the same question when you appear for the interview. When you go for the interview, they might uh, ask you to um, write uh, a just one page brief uh, about uh, the kind of research which you are really interested in doing. Uh, just to have an idea that whether you are a little bit aware of the research field or not. So these are the different uh, things which usually a department uh, should be asking. Uh, uh, then uh, once you go for the interview, so uh, you should keep uh, a good CV handy, uh, which should have all the educational qualifications uh, very clearly mentioned uh, what exactly have you done with what were your schools or colleges from where you have taken your education uh, what was the percentage because usually i mean uh, we do not take things very seriously and uh, i mean very lightly um, the cvs are made until post graduation but the very important part when you are uh, uh, 
thinking of entering research field, CV becomes very important because you'll be asked many questions uh, just by looking at your CV that uh, what is your special area of interest and what exactly is in your mind when you're thinking about research. So uh, I will uh, make another video. Uh, I, I'll just close it down here and I'll make another small video where I'll be just talking about only the uh, interview related questions or uh, what exactly do we need to um, do we need to do uh, I mean a specific kind of preparation or anything if it is required so I'll be making another video for that and uh, that's all for today because I just wanted to uh, mention about these documents in this video which you uh, should be um, going through I mean which you should go through so that you understand this whole uh, admission process very clearly so that's all for today uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, wish you all the very best.